Well, John, again today there was a lot of tough, quite militaristic talk around clamping down on channel crossings. But what's arguably more interesting is what's going to be happening in court over the months to come. So, for example, when the Prime Minister said during the week he wants to see new legislation making it easier to deport people, what did he actually mean by that? What part will Brexit play in all of that? And today a group of 20 people challenged the legality of their deportation after they'd come across on small boats, a deportation that was due to take place tomorrow. As for us, we spent the day in the network of encampments here around Calais, talking to people who had tried to get across on those small boats, but failed. In the small Sudanese camp, Calais, everyone has a role. Cooks, cleaners. Former journalist Mohammed is now the camp poet. A lot, I lost a lot of things come to let my life is hard to break my head by patient yeah maybe can wait a lot of hopes tried here cry tear block no get because of that I like it some and some I hate a lot I lost a lot of things come to let these are the men you may have seen on news reports from a distance trying to cross the channel this is those people but up close they killed my father when I was a kid in Darfur and also I grow in as a hate a government there. Two young men agreed to be interviewed on a condition of anonymity. They were children of the Sudanese civil war. The 17-year-old we'll call Kamal, born in the Darfur camps. The 23-year-old we'll call Ahmed, highly educated, driven, three years traveling, now stuck in Calais for months. In a way, is, it, is this the hardest part of the journey because it feels like the journey has stopped? Ah, the hardest time is here. Yeah. Ahmed has tried to cross on a small boat but was turned back. I put to him that over 4,000 people doing the same this summer is too much, too dangerous. What does it mean 4,000 people's inside? Is it too much for the country? For the big country, 4,000 is too much. They can live in the small village, all these 4,000. They can live in the small town. Life is easy, but they try to make it difficult. If I need you, why you don't need me? If I love you, why you don't love me? This is my opinion. Much earlier in the day, dawn over the channel and French police patrolling the beaches. In Paris, the British immigration minister, alongside the new clandestine channel threat commander, was talking about a new action plan to make crossings unviable. We have worked on a, a joint operational plan, a revised, a new operational plan, with the objective in mind of completely cutting this route, and we're going to be working at pace in the coming days to make that plan a reality. He wouldn't be drawn on the details or how much money it will involve, but expect more visual, militaristic-style operations at sea. Do not expect more regularised legal corridors. Rightly or wrongly, that solution, your solution, is politically just not palatable at the moment in Britain. The British public are not, not compassionate. They don't not care. They simply don't understand all the facts as I see them. They think that people here are economic migrants that they have to be afraid of for some reason, and they don't. Poets don't make policy, but last word to Mohammed. Dreamed of a life in Britain, dreaded death in Darfur. Back home felt he had just one option. Now at least, feels he has two. We have one solution in our country, just to die. Here we have two solutions, cross sea, or die. I think if you are in my position, what you will choose. Porico Brown reporting. Now let's go over to our chief correspondent, Alex Thompson. He's in Dover. Alex. Yes, John, well, egged on by various politicians, it's fair to say that in recent days, the whole debate over these people coming across in these appalling conditions and tiny craft has grown, frankly, as heated as the weather. Migrants? Well, only they know that. Refugees? Only they can answer that. Legal or illegal? A slew of questions surrounds even that. And yet, when you get out there, in the Straits of Dover, in the dawn light, out of sight of land, 
Only one thing matters. None of the politics matter. None of the criminal gangs and the criminality that underpins this massive trafficking operation seems to matter. Only one thing, and that is the international maritime law of the sea, which says if you find someone in peril on the deep, you save their life, you give them aid. And that is what we saw close yeah. up this morning. It is. Just after 4 a.m., leaving Dover for what is either a crisis surge and dangerous immigration or a tiny number of people exploited by people traffickers and politicians. By dawn, we're in another world where one thing alone matters, maritime law. The Maltese registered Kalida looms from the mist, fully laden with crude oil at over 100,000 tonnes in waters where, nearby, there is this. Which country? 15 young men from Syria, they say, Dara, where the uprising and civil war began. We were asked by our skipper to supply water. Politics has no place here. Only maritime law, which dictates our vessel and all aboard, must save life and render help required. Dover Coast Guard, Dover Coast Guard, Maverick, routine traffic, left channel 67, uh, Michael Vessel report. Our skipper must get instructions from Border Force immigration officials. Obviously in situations such as this, first of all we just monitor the situation and make sure they're, uh, they're okay. And then it's down to the Border Force and the local Coast Guard for them to, uh, to uh, organise all the rescue and the transit for whatever's going to happen to them back in the UK. You've been in touch with them, what are they saying? Yep, yeah, we've been in touch with them, we've got to wait, there's uh, Border Force on their way. So we're just going to sit tight here, stand by the vessel, make sure they're all okay and wait for the uh, Border Force to arrive. Come this way, this way! We're asked by Border Force to escort the overladen rib from the shipping lane immediately. It's not simply the obvious dangers of being hit by a vessel like this, it's the wake that a container vessel like that produces, which could upset something like this over here. If we pan this way, you can see that a rib like that would be upset by the wake. So what the skipper's doing now is trying to position our boat between the container vessel and the rib. Within the hour, a border force cutter and support arrive to bring these men to safety. More than 4,000 people have made it across the channel this year and almost 600 between Thursday and Sunday. Q23 Tory MPs writing to the Home Secretary about, quote, invading migrants. Dover's Conservative MP Natalie Elphick won't endorse that kind of language, but says this is organised people trafficking and that must be confronted. Well, I think in order to bring an end to the small boats crossing crisis, then we need three things. The first is for the French to stop boats before they leave the French shore. The second is to make sure that wherever people are intercepted in the channel, they're taken securely and safely back to France. And the third is that if people do come into Britain through these illegal routes, that they are returned swiftly and promptly. And in that way, migrants and traffickers alike will know that this is a, a crossing route that won't succeed and it will come to an end. Back at sea, Border officials are moving full throttle all over again towards another overloaded boat and another 13 people. Our pictures indicate this boatload was so desperate to attempt the crossing, not one had even been given a life jacket. So tonight the government's talking about a comprehensive plan to stop all this happening. No sign of it in place, which means right now here in Dover, if you go out there tomorrow at dawn, you will certainly see exactly, if the sea remains calm, what we saw today. And that is a sign of international failure. Back to you. Alex Thompson reporting.